my name is Amy and welcome to my channel. So it is actually present day March and I've been hacking away at my community cardigan that I started last summer and I'm finally done with it. I actually filmed a bunch of content over the last six months thinking I'll make it into a vlog but that never oh. happened. I think a part of the reason was because I was still trying to figure out how I wanted to edit. I felt like there was a huge learning curve with creating longer content here on YouTube. For those of you who might not be familiar, my main platform is on Instagram. And if you found me here on YouTube, I am so happy that we connected. But yeah, so there's so much fear that it's not gonna be as interesting or um, the way that I had envisioned, but you know what? I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna show up. I'm just gonna post it and share with you a little bit about my creating journey. I just got done filming my free pattern roundup. So while my face and my hair are done, we're gonna do all of the filming that I need to do. <laughs> So we're actually in LA for Thanksgiving week and I brought my project with me and so we're gonna whip this out. So if I lay it all out like this, um, this is gonna be the back panel and I was thinking this would be the front panel like on the left side of the chest so that's why the squares are facing this way. They're joined right here, that's gonna be the shoulder. I did watch some quick tutorials on how to sew together granny squares but for the most part I needed to like really pick everything apart uh, with my own brain. I'm also realizing a couple of things from filming this. One, my hair has gotten extremely long, and two, it really needs to get cut. Oh my goodness, my ends are begging to be chopped off. I digress. I asked all of the participants to try their best to make it around four inches, and I'm facing them together like this and then we're going to single crochet them through the binding. The cool thing is, even though the number of stitches on the border are not the same, uh, I can kind of join two in one all along the way until it's like sewn together. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. I can see that on this square in front of me, there are more stitches than this one. It just means that a skinnier yarn was used and so there were more stitches used to make the same size square. So what I'm gonna do is double up and I'm gonna insert my hook into the both loops of this square and then into both loops of the square behind it. And then yarn over and single crochet as I normally would. And then when I go into the next stitch, I'm gonna go into the same stitch that we just worked in the back square, just like that. We're gonna do that all the way across. All right, this is what we've got so far. Let's add the sleeves. Using the Red Heart uh, Super Saver Sky, and I forgot like what colorway this is called, but anyway, it's got like this uh, variegated effect and I'm just making a bunch of little squares with it. Um, I realized very quickly I cannot make amigurumi with this because I just don't like how the color changes unexpectedly on you when you're making like smaller makes. Um, if you're making something bigger, the gradient looks really nice, but with my sized amigurumi, it's just the colors change too infrequently for it to make sense. <laughs> this is all that is left of that skating saw earlier, and I think I can squeeze in one more granny square. Let's see if I win yarn chicken. So we made it about this far and I have this much yarn left. Eee! I'm not sure if we're gonna make it. All right, y'all, we did not make it. We definitely lost and by a lot. <laughs> um, but I do have some pink yarn at home that I can just finish up the rest of this border. Uh, so we're looking good. I crocheted as many granny squares as I could with that scrap yarn I had. And so these are going to be the sleeves. I love the way that the gradient worked out. You can see on these two squares, for example, no, they have not been blocked, but um, the gradient colors just worked out so perfectly. So this is how we're doing Thanksgiving. Costco for the win. It looks awful. Okay. The ends are all breaking it off. <laughs> like a dry straw, a split. Split ends all the way up. Mm. Because you had a bleached end. Mm -hmm. Stop bleaching in, eh? I know, I'm done. Oh. Thank you. Okay, I need your honest opinion. 
I am sewing all this together, well, crocheting it all together, and I'm adding like this green ribbing and everything. Now I'm looking at it and I'm like, wow, this is really overwhelming, like the neon gradient because I want the attention to be on these squares, not on these. Mm, my dilemma. I kind of want to undo everything or just like save these for something else. I don't know what. And just make cream sleeves, you know? Oh, what do I do? So we are back in San Jose and this is what my cardigan looks like so far. So I did begin attaching one of the sleeves, but then uh, I was feeling like it was way too overwhelming uh, with the neon sleeves because it was drawing attention away from these lovely squares. And so um, people over on Instagram let me know that cream sleeves would be a much better decision. So we're going to undo all this. Goodbye to all of my hard work. I have no idea what I'm gonna do with these squares. Um, I have so many of them now, but we'll find the right project for them in due time. I'm actually working on a baby blanket when I was um, when I just gave birth, and then I just never finished it, and I just undid the whole thing. I have like four or five of these balls of yarn now. I worked on a bunch of squares on the drive home from LA, so it was a great way to kill time. I misplaced my clover hook, and so I'm using my backup hook Oh, it is not the same. My production is so much slower. I feel like the yarn is snagging a lot more. I'm just not used to like this head, I think, because it's a lot fatter. But any hoodles, we'll make it work like we always do. I'm working on the other collar like border thing right now. And I don't remember like if I started from the top or the bottom on the other side, so. We're just gonna go with it. Um, but anyway, as I'm working on this, I just thought it'd be kind of fun to share some of my thoughts about browsing the SJ Made Holiday Fair. Um, I've been attending for the last three years, I think, and it's always like my favorite time of year. Um, it was a priority for me to be able to make it, so that's why we rushed home from LA yesterday so that um, I could go. And I just felt so much inspiration, like so much from being around um, other creators. For sure, it is a big dream of mine to be able to participate next winter. Um, hoping that by then the kids will be a little older and that doing a two day event will be doable. For a business like mine, that requires every single stitch to be done by hand, I need to start preparing for the market like now. <laughs> There's another really big reason why I'm hoping to do this fair next winter, and that is because I'm working on a very special project and it should be ready by then. Hint, hint. I'll be making a more formal announcement on what I am alluding to as the time approaches. For now, it's gonna remain a little bit of a mystery. Another really helpful thing I was paying close attention to was um, people's displays and also what their banners looked like, what were good setups versus bad setups. Like there were a few of these tables that um, were U-shaped and I really did see firsthand how hard it was for me as a shopper to get around to all of their products. Uh, the reason being there were so many people who were congested and then as you were waiting you just kind of like lost interest and that's what like led me to walk away and explore other places but also really great on them for being able to draw in a crowd i was super excited to shop for more prints as well for my little art nook in my room. I also saw a lot of neat displays for keychains. Um, that is particularly something I'm so clueless about when it comes to how do I display my crochet keychains. Um, it's not really primarily what I do. I really do feel like people look for those smaller items. And so I do plan on offering a lot more. I was very impressed at how people priced things. I think I was encouraged to up my prices a little bit for next year's market. I definitely feel like I underpriced at my last market, um, but that was primarily to get rid of a lot of my previously made things. So I was fine with that. But I think for next year's market, since I'm almost at no stock right now, I'm a little more confident that I can ask for what I would consider is fair. All right, this cannot be happening. I just found this on the bottom of my yarn closet and I think one of my kids got into it. Uh, and I just realized it never made it to the cardigan. I'm gonna have to make space for this. I just absolutely have to. This one is from Allison of Wonder Crochet. It, it, it's, it's gonna happen. It's a dreary day, um, but we've made it to our destination. 
So I made my first yarn purchase of the year at Michael's and you might be wondering, well, I've seen you post about other new yarn you've gotten. And yes, it was the first purchase because the big pish, the big posh, <laughs> The Big Twist Posh Yarn that I did a review on was actually purchased with grant money, so I didn't actually buy it. It wasn't sponsored, so it was still an honest review. The new yarn that I am going to be showing you today is by Loops and Threads. This is Fluffy Chanel Polyester Yarn. I'm pretty thrilled that they came out with this because it's basically like a much fluffier, less dense version of Bernat Extra Thick Blanket. You know what? I have some right here. I bought some earlier last year because I was going to do a little bit of hand knitting or something like that. Right now they're having a BOGO sale. I have another discount I could stack on top of the BOGO sale and so overall it came out to be around $12 for two skeins which I think is a pretty good deal. This new yarn comes in a few pastel shades and I was really really hoping to use the pink but they only had one skein on the shelf and I knew that this project might need a little extra. Valentine's Day has already passed at this point, but somebody had actually messaged me on Etsy asking, hey, can I make your giant heart pattern with finger crochet? I had let them know that unfortunately not, but then I thought about it and I was like, well, I've never tried finger crochet. How hard could it be? The label on the back of this yarn says that you should use a size 25 millimeter hook. However, the largest one I could find was a 15 millimeter hook. And I went to several different Joanne locations and Michael's locations. All of them were out of the 25 millimeter hooks. My giant heart pattern comes out with three different size variations. And so I decided to go with the smallest variation that I originally wrote using Lion Brand's Go For Faux yarn. And we're gonna try it out with finger crocheting. I made one of the humps to just try it out and see if like the size would be something I would be happy with. And actually it's looking lovely. This is only 12 single crochet stitches around. And because I'm liking the way it's turning out, I'm gonna go ahead and make the second one and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I've switched my orientation, so we're looking at the floor here. Mind you, this is not a full tutorial. It's just showing you how I'm working with my fingers. I used a scrap piece of yarn to keep track of the beginning of my rounds, and I'm really feeling for each of the stitches and paying attention as I'm counting. I've already made round one with six single crochet stitches in the magic circle. I actually did the chain two method because it's so much easier with this kind of texture. Okay, so to finger crochet, I first go into the stitch and then I'm grabbing the yarn with my index finger. And technically it's yarning under, which I normally do anyway, and then yarning over for the final pull through. So that's one single crochet stitch. And I'm keeping track using my middle finger here so that I don't lose my spot. So I'm going to do another single crochet stitch in the same stitch because that's my first increase of round two. All right, now I'm going on to the next stitch. So again, grabbing the yarn, yarning over, and I'm keeping my finger in that stitch all the while. And again, okay. I actually think I might be able to use one skein of yarn for my giant heart. I'm gonna keep going. Okay, and this is the last increase of round two. And it's looking really nice. There's no like giant gaps. Now if I'm sticking my fingers through them, yes, there, it's kind of holy, but I mean, that's expected with this type of yarn. And I am just loving how it's turning out. I actually had my daughter choose the color because as I said, there was not enough pink and I'm thinking she made a really good choice. <laughs> now we're gonna join these two circles together. It does shed a bit at the ends when you cut the tails. So just try not to pull through it too much. And I feel like it's like the perfect throw pillow size. And I also wanted to share about a very special book that a friend of mine wrote. This is called A Gift for Nai Nai and it is by Kim Hua Ung. She is known as Autumn Leaflet on Instagram and she was one of the very first crochet designers that I followed a pattern from when I was first starting out way back in, I think 2018. I just think that the illustrations are absolutely beautiful. It captures 
two things very important to me. One, Asian American representation, and also two, the love of fiber arts. For those of you who didn't know, I was also an elementary school teacher for a number of years. Being intentional about the children's literature we introduced to our classrooms was really important to me. In this book, it also introduces a few phrases in Chinese, which I think is so neat. And I think one of my favorite parts about this story is how it captures the love of creating and the love of fiber art. And that was something that could be shared between generations. There are so many important lessons in this book, such as perseverance, and there's even a little bonus pattern in the very back of the book. So thank you once again, Kim Hua, for this beautiful gift. I will link where you can find this book in the description as well. I okay, know this isn't the best angle, but and it's easier with two hands. But this is basically what I've been doing after I weave in the tails a little bit. I give it a final needle belting. Ready for the reveal? And then I didn't realize this until um, Isa from Hannes Crochet came to visit me, but I put this on to show her. And then she, she noticed that one side was a little longer than the other. And I don't know if you can see that. I know I'm kind of cut off here, but it is because I had a couple of squares here that were a little bit longer than the rest. And so this side came out a little bit longer. <laughs> And that's totally okay because I think that with a little bit of blocking, it'll actually work out fine. All right, that was not a good idea. <laughs> I definitely set off the fire alarm, but that's okay. And um, it looks so much better after blocking. Now I understand, now I understand. <laughs> and look at that, it is already so much more even. I intentionally blocked this side a little bit more than this side because this was already a little bit longer. It's looking so good. Let me flip it over for you. You can really see all of the gorgeous squares like this. I feel like the ones on the side might be hidden by the sleeves. Okay, I did realize that there's one little string that I forgot to uh, sew in, so I'll do that later. The cardigan is finally complete. The sleeves make me feel like a snow angel. Okay, let's do another turnaround now that it has been blocked. And let me move my hair. Hopefully it's out of the way. And the side too. I just really want to make sure I'm in the frame. It's a lot harder to do by yourself. This is like super surreal seeing it all. Gosh, I feel stupid. I feel like stupidly emotional about this. <laughs> it's been a long time coming. So I really wanna thank you for your patience as I pieced together each of these squares sent in by you. I feel like I might've said this way too many times at this point, but truly thank you from the bottom of my heart. I opened up your granny squares all at different times and I had carefully save some of your notes in like a really nice shoe box for safekeeping and then i redid my whole bedroom a couple of months back i like painted the walls here if you can see my sprinkle wall and um i moved it i bought a new desk and everything and that shoe box was in my old desk so i moved it somewhere safe but for the life of me i just cannot figure out where did i put this i hid it so well 
but now I cannot find it. <laughs> if you didn't happen to see your note or some of the small little freebie things that you may have sent, um, for example, I can think of a little smiley face plushie. I feel absolutely terrible that I could not locate it. For when I wanted to film everything, I sincerely apologize. They are somewhere and they will surface eventually when I get my life more organized. <laughs> Now that they're all assembled, it's hard to see all of the squares all at once. So from one angle, the front side is covered and obviously vice versa. And I tried my best to get as many angles of the final product for you as I could. But bringing community together through our mutual love for art, our mutual love for crochet and all things yarn, it seriously makes my heart feel so full and it truly could not have been done without you. I went through every single package and I counted up all of the different locations that the squares came in from. And we had a total of 38 different states that participated and six different countries total. The countries that participated were the US, Canada, France, Switzerland, Malaysia, and Singapore. Most of the squares came from the US, not a surprise there. Of those states, California had the most squares sent in with 10. We had squares from Hawaii and everywhere in between. This is going to be something that I treasure truly for the rest of my life. And I cannot wait to show this off at my next craft fair so I can share with people all about this amazing project that you helped bring to life. Thank you for tuning in and I promise my next vlog will not be six months long. Um, <laughs> until next time, keep crocheting, keep creating, and I will see you soon.